Apparently, it's chess. I don't know, number one board game. It's kind of a dumb question. So there's a lot of different ways to look at the question of number one board game. Uh, the board game that is most well known worldwide and probably has the most amount of sales is a chess. But uh, chess is old. Like bruh, people were playing chess when the world was a crusading. We will take Jerusalem. Deus 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 so yeah, of course, chess is gonna completely overshadow any modern board game in terms of exposure and sales. Uh, because of this, chess is most likely not a satisfactory answer to anyone who's more familiar with our underground, not so underground board game hobby. In fact, the whole idea for this video came from this Twitter thread from Shroud's Gloomhaven tweet. By the way, love you, Shroud, but where's the Gloomhaven content? I gotta see them sick reaction times with them cardboard flicks, bro. Actually, it turns out that he's preparing a a crazy board game stream setup, so in the meantime, he's been grinding that gloom even digital. Hell yeah. I'm gonna like that, cool. This is gonna be a big fucking hit. I might just kill <laughs> Dude, them all. You're about to wipe out I this hope you do. Clip it! Clip it! <laughs> Hello? Anyways, you scroll down enough, and for some reason, you see these dudes arguing about what the number one board game is, and it's pretty clear we got two people coming in from completely different realities here, so of course, they're gonna get nowhere. What is this game, Shrudel? It's called Gloomhaven, number one board game of all time. Not sure you can make that claim over Monopoly. It looks interesting, though. Ha ha ha, if you are serious at all about that, then we need to talk. If you want to be real technical, the number one board game of all time would probably be chess or checkers, maybe Mancala. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but we are literally talking right now. Among those who actually play board games, those are not the best of all time. Here are their rankings. Based on what? The facts. Definitely not sales. But funny that your rankings don't line up. Ha 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 ha. I'm not basing it off sales. Most of those games have been around for forever, so that doesn't prove anything. There's a website that those who actually play board games go to to rate games based upon how the experience is. Check it out, BoardGameGeek.com. Ah, gotcha. They're making claims based on objective opinion from a small sample size, not facts. That makes more sense, and in case you haven't noticed, Forever is included in all time, which based on fact, makes chess the number one best board game of all time. Let's try something. You go and play chess in the Gloomhaven, and then come back and tell me how chess is better than Gloomhaven. Maybe you'll agree with the small sample size of 38,000 people who agree that Gloomhaven is better than chess. Wall 38k is an absolute minuscule sample size when you are claiming something to be the number one of all time. Well, for those who actually care about the board game hobby, it's not minuscule at all. Oh, we're the ones who use on it compared to a game that's been out for 500 years, years and only has 20,000 views on it. it. Not a big deal though, no sense in trying to convince someone who has nothing of the hobby. Oh, bro, talking this dude's level, Jesus Christ, he clearly is not in on the tabletop hobby. So what the flippity flap flop do you think is gonna happen when you start going like, well actually Gloomhaven's the number one board game of all time? Like most gamers have no idea that the board game hobby even exists, let alone what the hell Gloomhaven Maven is. <laughs> and as you may have noticed, the term number one board game is a really poopy term since board gaming as a concept is just so goddamn old. There's a lot of a historical context behind board gaming, so at this point, it's a pretty loaded term made all the more evident by the fact that if someone you don't know says a oh, board games, you don't know if it's Monopoly or newer games from our nerdy ass hobby. Basically, uh, what I'm saying is uh, that because board games have been around for Goddamn of forever. They've had all the time in the world to produce a big name classics that everyone associates with the board games. There's stuff like a chess, a checkers, Monopoly, Scrabble, you name it. Board games also aren't you know, movies or video games, you know, just media that's in the limelight right now. So most people would assume that there aren't really any new board games being made since there's not that much exposure. Plus entertainment nowadays is mostly digital anyways. If this goddamn pandemic hasn't made that obvious enough, you're constantly hearing people talk about what shows they've watched, what video games they're playing. There's ads for these two things constantly. And then you've got board games. Like a bro. Our clout, our exposure game, it needs some serious work. Like, yo, how the flippity flap flop does a subreddit with 3 million subs get posts that top at only like 4,000 upvotes monthly? Like, 
What the f- Meanwhile, you got Fall Guys! 200,000 subscribers! The 30,000 upvotes! The 20,000 upvotes! Oh my god! I'm telling you, some memes. We just need more memes. Everyone meme more. We need more memes pronto. Welcome to Watch It Play. My name is Rodney Smith. And in this video- Back to the question at hand, though. If we look at number one board game through the lens of our board game hobby, that can also mean different things. So, if we want to go by just games that came out in the last few decades or so, that's immediately a better place to start. So we can exclude all the classics. Okay, then where do we go? from there. Do we just look at ratings? Because then, yeah, Board Game Geek is probably going to be an amazing resource for that since it's the biggest board gaming website right now. And if you look at it by that metric, we get Gloomhaven. If you want to go by sales, I'm pretty sure it's like Settlers of Catan or something that takes that cake. Man, subjectivity is a bitch. You're telling me I can't just definitively say what's the number one board game? Whoa, bro. Next thing you're going to tell me is that reviews are biased and unobjective. Like, what the fuck? Board game Twitter dude did have a point that was completely lost on who he was talking to, and that's that sales aren't fully indicative of the quality of a game. For those of us playing all these new spangled board games coming out, uh, I can pretty confidently say that we don't really give a shiznits about how chess or Monopoly have been around for a really long time and have god knows how many hundreds of millions of copies sold at this point. If you're playing Gloomhaven or Pandemic Legacy or whatever the hell else is on the top 100 list, you're probably having way more fun than if you were playing chess. Unless you're already into chess, but now chess feels more like a lifestyle game more than an actual like board game that you can just pick up and play, I don't know. Also super funny and totally unrelated tangent, but if you go on Twitch and look at chess, now that it's out of its random resurgence phase from a couple months ago, that viewership is pretty blah. Like, it's literally being carried by one streamer, Grandmaster Hikaru, who actually understands internet culture and isn't gatekeepy. Like some people in the chess community. <laughs> Uh, you got the dick riders, you know, like Hikaru's biggest example, obviously. Oh, yeah, I'm friends with QVC, you know, then you got those guys. I mean, QVC and Boxbox, negative talent in life, nothing. No nothing up here, nothing here. Just, you know, you guys are all idiots and they're like doing nonsense. And you guys are like, wow, you ignore people with no talent. But Hikaru's like, oh, that guy has more money than me and he gets more viewers, so. Don't get keep. It's not cool. You just look like a dick, stop it. Anyways, if you ask me what are the best board games, I'd just say referring to Board Game Geek is not such a bad idea. Not only do they have a, a shitload of reviews, meaning they got pretty good data, they also got a pretty good algorithm to prevent games with a smaller amount of scores to just climb up their ranking system. If you go to their wiki, they describe the process as adding about 100 votes equal to 5.5, but then they actually hide the actual working, so that people can't just manipulate the ratings. And granted, considering how decentralized this board game hobby is, with tons of differing opinions flying in from all over the goddamn place, expect to see some weird biases here, because it takes a certain type of person to be invested enough to want to create an account on Board Game Geek and post up their collection and scores on there. Even so, it's still a really good resource to have. And if you were like me who played a crap load of board games but never made a BGG account for the longest time, I'd encourage you to get in there and post some scores. Not only are you helping to provide better ratings for the site, but you also get to do some introspection and ask yourself why you like the games you like, which helps a lot for knowing what games you'll want to buy in the future. And in the end, the title of number one board game doesn't really matter that much, because ultimately, this is all about knowing what you like and playing the games that you love the most. If you're having a great time, all the more power to you, buddy. Don't let some collective of arbitrary review scores and sales numbers ever stop you from doing what you love. And a huge shout out to our patrons, starting with the Mad Lads, Jeff and Z. And we got Aaron, Quentin, Travis, Jeremy Clifford, Max Alvin, Codename Juan, Marius, Charlie, Dylan, Sam, John, Manuel, and Brian. Thank you all so much for your support. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, follow our social media, and we'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.